This weekend welcomes the return of the greatest one day race in the world. Paris Roubaix is back. And long before the era of Cross dominating the road, with Van der Poel, Van Aert, Pidcock and everybody else, there was one man who paved that way for them. A man who has gone oh so close in the hell of the north before. I'm of course talking about Zdenek Stibar. Zdenek Stiba was born on the 11th of December 1985 in the Czech village of Plana. Growing up, he dreamed of becoming a professional ice hockey player, oftentimes attending games in the nearby city of Pilsen with his family. However, Stiba also excelled on the bike. Initially starting in BMX, he even became world champion at seven years of age. In the end though, Stiba's love would be cyclocross, and in the late 90s, his early teenage years, the Czech Republic were going to a particular strong patch, Pilsen playing regular host to the Super Prestige at the time as well. Of course, the issues with Cross was its winter calendar. It forced a young Stibar to choose between Cross and Hockey, eventually settling for two wheels over the two blades. The earliest results and information regarding Stibar date back to the 2001-2002 season. He would turn 16 in December of that year, meaning he was incredibly young for some of the results he pulled off, namely a few junior victories, including the prestigious Tabor, as well as bronze medals at the Junior National and World Championships. In the world, he'd even compete against Andy Schleck. His second and final junior year, would see 10 junior victories, including more classics in his hometown of Pilsen and in the Swiss Steinmauer. Stibar would also claim a first Czech title in his second junior year and again finish third at the Worlds. For the following 03-04 season, Stibar became an under-23 rider and like many, his first year was spent acclimatising to the level. A first ever elite podium in the Toy Toy Cup round of Podborani and a 6th place at the World Championships definitely showed that the ability was in there. By 04-05, Stibar really made his mark. His season started amongst the elites in his native Czech Republic with some good performances before his elite World Cup debut came with a 52nd place finish in Waterham Petergen. Stibar struggled a little bit throughout the early parts of the season, but by November he was a podium regular amongst the under 23s and by January, he'd taken a podium amongst the elite too, as Stibar at just 20 years of age became the elite national champion of the Czech Republic, heralding a new generation of top quality Czech crossers, with fellow youngsters Martin Bina and Radomir Šimonek Jr. rounding the podium. Weeks later, the riders got served an icy and frozen world championships in St. Vendel, and predictably, it was the Swiss and the Czechs who dominated on terrain that suited them far more than the Belgians and the Dutch. Non-dominating quite like Zdenek Stibar. He would blow himself into the spotlight as the next big thing by winning the world title in dominant fashion. A world title he would be all too happy to defend in Zedam 12 months later, finishing off Lars Bohm and Niels Albert in a three-way sprint. This victory made Stibar only the second Czech ever to hold more than one title. Could Stibar be the successor to Radomir Šimonek Sr? The following season, Stibar would make his move from the under 23s to the elites, racing in both categories at various races, and he did quite well. The youngster only missed the top 10 on four occasions throughout the entire season. During the opening weeks of the season in the Dutch Harder Wijk, Stibar would win the Groot Prijs Shimano, his very first elite victory. He would also get to raise his hands aloft in Ardoje and in Oderzo amongst the elites. At under 23 level, Stibar would win his first World Cup in Treviso and the first Super Prestige in Rudervoorde. However, by the time the Worlds came around in Hoogleder Hills, the best had gone for the season. 
he's not strong enough and his final under 23 world championships ends with a fourth place. Not that this downward trend would last very long. By the next season Stibar was a full elite racer and he'd need just three races to raise his arms aloft as he took victory in the Toy Toy Cup in Luni and then in Pilsen. A month later and a first super prestige podium later we land at our next major objective in the career of Zdenek Stibar with the opening round of the World Cup in Kalmthout. On the fast Belgian circuit Stibar came into it looking for a very first career podium. In the autumn breeze he'd quickly form part of a leading group using an attack by fellow youngster Lars Bohm as a launch pad to soar off into the distance and try as they might nobody would be able to follow him. In the end Sven Nijs would come the closest but even the cannibal couldn't match the youngster, Stibar raising his arms aloft and winning a first elite world cup round. The rest of the season Stibar would keep performing consistently, grabbing regular podiums and managing top 5 overall finishes in the GVA Trophy and the Super Prestige. Stibar would take a second Czech elite title and that meant that a month later Stibar would be in the perfect form to threaten Sir Nice and Bart Wellens' dominance at the World Championships, this year held in Treviso in Italy. Having already witnessed an amazing under 23 race involving future world champions, World Cup winners and Fabio Aru, we set off on an equally brilliant elite race. Lars Bohm would fly out of the start blocks but the race would be a close and tactical one, Stibar playing a somewhat subdued role in the race later admitting that he was somewhat overwhelmed by the occasion and in fact did not really want to become world champion yet. He felt he wasn't mentally ready for that strain and thus he was all too happy to see Lars Bohm soar off into the distance and claim the title. Stibar himself took a very respectable second place. With an elite world championship podium under his belt Stibar's wings would start to unfurl. He'd become a constant fixture in top 10s in World Cups, Super Prestiges and Trophy rounds, oftentimes just missing the experience to round off the victory. By January 2009 it was time for another World Championships, this time in the Dutch town of Hogeheide and defending world champion Lars Boom had since switched to the road but returned to defend his title. Doing so with a somewhat smug confident attitude, something that rubbed the Belgian contingent the wrong way. With the Low Countries setting up for all out war, Stibar would hope to play both sides and see if that would let him come out on top. As the flag drops the Belgians attack Bohm one after the other, first Van Tornout, then Nice and eventually Niels Albert makes the decisive split, spotting the danger Stibar dives past Bohm and the men in bright blue and flies into second place in pursuit of the defending under 23 world champion. He'd quickly shed Nice and Sven von Thurn out from his wheel and soar towards Albert. He would get within a few meters, within two seconds of the Belgian, but try as he might, he'd never quite reach that wheel. And as the race went on, he'd start to slide backwards, eventually being more concerned with keeping second than winning the race. And as Niels Albert claimed the world title, Stibar holds off second and wins another silver medal. Now, undeniably, the greatest Belgian foe. With another silver medal Stibar turned to gold, more than tripling his total victories to win 11 times in the following year. These victories almost all coming at the highest possible level as well. By winning two rounds and being ever consistent Stibar would be the man to finally unseat Sven Nice's five year total dominance of the classifications. Nice had won 15 consecutive classification titles, whilst the Belgian kept the trophy, the super prestige went to the Czech. The World Cup would go down to the wire as well, with Stibar leading into the final round over world champion Niels Albert. For Stibar to win the title, he would have to beat Albert or finish no more than one position behind him, meaning a top two finish was always good enough. As Albert dives into the distance, doing what he must to win the title, Stibar is joined in second and third by his teammate Kevin Powells. During the race, Powells does the honourable thing, allowing his teammate second place and securing an end to Nice's World Cup dominance. 
after it transpires that Baker CP, the team of Niels Albert, had offered Powell's upwards of 10,000 euros to attack Stiba. With that much money on the line, you must be thinking Stiba offered Powell something truly incredible to keep his teammate on signed. You like I would be totally wrong, as Stiba instead bought Powell's the single most 2000s thing he could have possibly thought of, a PlayStation Portable. Being a few hundred euros and a copy of Need for Speed Underground 2 poorer, but a silent Belgian friend richer, Stiba headed back to the Czech Republic because Tabor had been selected to host this year's Cyclocross World Championships, and Stiba was not going to settle for second this time. Typical for the Czech Republic in January, the ground was utterly frozen in Tabor. There was snow abound everywhere, and despite a first lap mechanical, Stiba was able to fight his way back to the front, and by the midway point of the race, would launch a massive attack, gapping a chasing group of Christian Heuler, Klaas von Tornout and Francis Mouret. Those three would never see him back, as Stiba races the back half of the race completely alone, never being threatened by anyone else. A show of utter dominance, the likes of which we hadn't seen since St. Wendel in 2005. Throughout the final lap, he can drink in his success, dominating in front of a home crowd, the second ever elite Czech world champion. For the first time in 29 years, the Rainbow Bands went to the Czech Republic. He had pulled off the impossible to win the greatest prize at the greatest place that he could have done so. Now with the Rainbow Jersey firmly on his shoulders, Stiba would start to dominate alongside Belgians Sven Nijs and Niels Albert. The three would collectively get named as the Big Three of Cyclocross, dominating and winning almost every race between them. Whilst he wouldn't claim any overall classifications in his first Rainbow stint, Stiba could count on individual wins in all three major competitions. And by the time that it was time for him to defend his world title, this time in the German Sank Wendel once again, he was more than ready. In a tight battle with Nice, Stiba would eventually dislodge the cannibal four laps from the end, holding him off to claim a second world title, being the first non-Belgian rider to successfully defend the men's elite world title since Switzerland's Albert Zweifel back in 1979. He was truly cyclocross royalty now. But would he stay that way? As the cross season came to its close, Stiba would have an announcement to make. With his second world title in the bag, on the 1st of March 2011, the Czech would move teams, leaving his Telenet Fidea squad to join the UCI World Tour Road Team Quickstep Cycling. As is tradition, Patrick Lefebvre's Wolfpack was strapped for cash and in need of investment. The 2011 edition of this impressively common event saw Czech billionaire Zdenek Bakala, a mining and energy mogul, invest in the team. Though I can't find any official confirmation, rumours at the time point to this being the reason that Stiba was signed to a team that at the time seemed a lot higher in the pecking order than what you'd think he could realistically aim for. Bear in mind this is before the days of Van Aert van der Poel and the multidisciplinary gods of today. Even Lars Bohm was still struggling to find his feet. While Stiba's first road season wouldn't be terrible, it wasn't brilliant either. He'd manage a couple of World Tour top 10s in the Tour de Suisse and the Tour de Benelux. As the winter arrived once more though, his eyes darted to the field, where he would claim a World Cup win in Livet and the super prestiges of Hammer and Middelkerke. His main goal would be a third world title. However, in Coxider 2012, it was the day of the Belgians. In the sand, Stiba would come unstuck as Niels Albert put on a masterful performance. The Czech ending up in a disappointing 13th place would not be happy with how the day had gone. And as Stiba announced his decision to focus on the road full time, it looked like this 13th place could well be his final major cross result. Now with his wheels firmly on the asphalt, Stiba started to gain traction on the road though his 2012 season would still leave room to grow. 
A first victory for Quickstep would come this year at stage 4 of the 4 days of Dunkirk. Stage 3 of the Tour of Poland would be his first World Tour victory and in the build up to another cross season, Stibar would complete the Vuelta. The Czech hadn't yet made a dent into the road cycling ecosphere, but Hardy fans may start to recall his name, he was laying the foundations of something fairly impressive. That winter, Stibar would cross seven times, starting in his adoptive home of Essen. Stibar would there compete in probably the greatest cyclocross race I've ever watched, where he would end up missing the podium, the only time he would fail to do so. His six other races that year would all finish in podiums, with one victory, a seventh and final Czech title. With the World Championships this year taking place in Louisville in the USA, Stibar would choose not to compete, focusing on setting up a strong classics campaign, a classics campaign where Stibar would truly place himself as a successful road rider. He would show strong form by winning the opening day time trial of Tirreno Adriatico, before performing adequately as a domestique in the early classics, making his monument debut in Milan Sanremo, but really coming to the fore during the 2013 Paris-Roubaix, a race famed for numerous incidents involving spectators. After a small break had gone up the road consisting of quick-step teammate Stein van den Berg and a young Belgian destined for future greatness, was he not the unluckiest person in pro cycling history, Sepp von Marke. Swiss two-time winner of the race and pre-race favourite Fabian Cancellara delivered a true haymaker on the Canfin en Pevel section. Miraculously, Stibar was the only rider who could follow, looking fairly comfortable too. The two twosomes would eventually melt into four on the Carrefour de l'Abre section, where first Stein van den Berg would collect a fan, then Van Marke would come within inches of hitting one too, before finally Stibar, at this point probably the strongest rider left in the race, would collect a camera strap, sending him soaring across the cobbles. Knocked out of rhythm, Stibar would drop back to the second group, and as Spartacus took a third Roubaix win, Stibi would settle for sixth. The one thing he had done was make a hell of a name for himself, a name he would continue to show with two stages and the overall of the Bing Bang Tour, and a first Grand Tour stage win on stage 7 of the Vuelta. After exploding onto the road scene, Stibar would once more focus on cross, riding largely for his own amusement, but with the worlds back in Europe, Stibar was back in the worlds. Again this winter, Stibi would ride 7 crosses, claiming a World Cup podium in Zolder and even winning in Bredene. Having originally planned to end his season in Baal, where he'd finished second, his good form convinced him to have another crack at the World Championships. This year they were taking place once again in Hoge Heide, where Stibar of course had finished second before in 2009. This time round though, he was no longer the major favourite. Defending world champion Sven Nice had dominated in Sven Nice fashion, and was nailed on for a third world title. Home youngster Lars van der Haar and Belgian technical wizard Tom Meusen were seen as his nearest rivals. Then probably Francis Mouret, Kevin Powles, Niels Albert, and only then did Stibar really get mentioned. A firm outsider, but definitely a man who could pull off a shock. After a ferocious first lap, Stibar forced a selection. With him came Nice, van der Haar and Mouret. Another half lap later, Nice attacks, and only Stibar can follow him. The world serving up a third and final all-star punch-out between the cannibal and his Czech successor. Despite a small crash for Stibar, the two would be locked together until the very final lap, where Nice would make a small error in a tough rutted corner, Stibar soaring into the distance and never looking back. Five years after beating Lars Bohm, Belgium's biggest fear had been realised nonetheless. They'd been beaten in Hoerheide by a roadie, Stibar had done it, a third world title, elevating him to near mythical status in the cyclocross pantheon. Back in his rainbow bands, Stibar would venture to the road once more, again proving his ability on the northern classics, finishing 5th in Paris-Roubaix, another great finish. Unfortunately, the most remembered moment of Stibar's 2014 season would be an absolutely horrifying crash 
on the fifth stage of the Benelux tour, a crash that left him without teeth and with a long recovery that would impact his winter greatly. Partially due to this crash, Stibar would not ride a cross program as defending world champion. He'd only race once, finishing 8th at the Houghton course. Stibar's focus was primarily on the road now, and the emergence of Wout van Aert and Macho van der Poel meant that the cyclocross landscape was changing so rapidly into something so much more difficult for Stibar to compete in. Despite the world's being back in Tabor, Stibar would not defend his title as Macho van der Poel romped to victory. Stibar being the last rider to wear the rainbow jersey before the era of Van der Poel and Van Aert. The 2015 road season would show this decision would be worth it though. Stibar would take his biggest career win to date by winning Strade Bianche, before losing out in a sprint to John Degenkolb to narrowly miss out on Paris-Roubaix once again. Stibar would also make his Tour de France debut in 2015, even winning Stage 6. By 2017, Stibar would once again finish second in Roubaix, this time behind Greg van Avermaet, and in 2019, the Czech would add victories in Omloop at Nieuwsblad and the E3-Prijs. All the while, Stibar would still cross occasionally, largely due to his love for the sport and for the people of his adoptive Belgium home. Never really fighting for the win, though. Of course, as of writing this, Stibar is still an active pro, still part of the Quickstep Alpha Vinyl lineup. He'll be aiming to shine once more in Paris-Roubaix this weekend, but at the age of 36 is settling into more of a captaining role, shepherding new talent and looking back at his own immensely successful career. In his career so far, Stibar has racked up 7 World Cup victories, enough to place him as a joint 10th most victorious rider in the World Cup history. Along with that, he also has seven super prestiges and three trophy wins, also being the only Czech crosser, in fact, the only crosser not from Western Europe, to win the overall of the World Cup. Stibar has also won the overall of the super prestige once and holds the honour of being the person who was able to dethrone Sven Nice. Stibar's total career victories in cross come to 45, and included in those are, of course, his three elite world titles and seven Czech cross titles. Both those totals put Stibar amongst the absolute very best, both nationally and worldwide. Stibar, of course, also counts victories on the road, his biggest achievements being Strade Bianche, Omloop at Nieuwsblad, the E3 Prize, and stage wins in the Tour and Vuelta. A truly impressive palmares. Stibar is earmarked by his powerful, rampaging style. Throughout his cross career, he would often be called the successor to Sven Nice. The great man even said so himself. The two share an origin in BMX racing before moving into cross, and both tended to perform well across an entire season, not strictly peaking for certain moments. Stibi is an incredibly well-rounded crosser. His biggest strength was arguably his lack of a weakness. Possessing great technical ability, and a huge road-built engine, Stibar could go far on all terrain. Growing up in the Czech Republic, he had enough experience on the ice and snow as well, and he was arguably the best sprinter of his era too. The one weakness Stibar might have is the sand, where he would still compete, but he lacked a little bit of experience compared to the Belgians who grew up in the stuff, and therefore was a little bit off the pace there. But still, nothing bad. No matter the course and conditions, you could always count on Stibar to rip the race up from the start, making the racing as hard as he possibly could. Oftentimes, he'd go solo from a long way out. In fact, you could call him a precursor to the style of Van der Poel and Van Aert nowadays. Zdenek Stibar holds a really strange place in cyclocross folklore. He's the last rider to be world champion before the era of Wouter Mathieu. He was effectively a road rider when he achieved that final title, despite absolutely being a crosser too. Stibar was also, up until early this year, the only rider from outside the Netherlands and Belgium to win the world title this century, giving him a strange outsider feel too, the only foreign rider the Benelux hadn't successfully bullied away. Stibi is arguably more known as a road rider, and that makes it tough to judge him as a crosser. 
For me personally, Stibar is the reason I discovered Cross, the reason I even know of its existence. So for me, he holds a very special place. So I'll try and be objective when I say that Zdenek Stibar is absolutely one of the greatest crossers of all time. To me, together with Niels Albert, he forms the generation that went missing. Albert forced into retirement with a heart condition, Stibar charmed by the magic of Roubaix. Zdenek Stibar's three world titles put him alongside the likes of Wout van Aert and Erwin Verwecken, and ahead of riders such as Sven Nijs, Niels Albert, Henny Stamsneider and Radomir Szymonek, which is quite an achievement. Zdenek Stibar, to me, might well be the most disrespected crosser of all time, the one who is left out of way too many conversations. He is absolutely, talent-wise, of the calibre of Nice Libouton and of Vlaming to me. If he stuck around in cross, I believe he could have reached their stature, because on his day, he was as good as them. But Stibar did what Nice and Libouton never could. He successfully raced on the road, he found greener pastures and proved himself to be amongst the best all-round cyclists in the world. Zdenek Stibar is the greatest Czech crosser of all time, maybe even the greatest crosser from outside the Benelux. And with how many odds that fact stacks against him, the fact he has three world titles is truly miraculous. He is undoubtedly a legend of the sport.